Hey everybody, it's Emily. It's been a while, but I'm back with another Grass River Micro Class. Uh, today I want to talk about a really special plant here at the natural area. So a lot of times some of our more conspicuous carnivorous plants get all the attention. And I mean, rightly so, they're really cool. Plants like pitcher plant or round leaf sundew. Um, but today I want to talk about a more inconspicuous but equally cool carnivorous plant. Um, so I'm hanging out in the fen right now um, on the south shore of Clam Lake, sort of an open wetland. Um, and so today we're going to be looking at bladderwort. Now we have four species of bladderworts at the natural area. We have a uh, flat leaf bladderwort, which I'm pretty sure is the type we'll be looking at today, but they're a little hard to identify. We also have horned, common, and small bladderworts. Um, they all like to live in uh, water. They are submerged, free-floating um, plants, meaning that they don't actually have roots, though many of their leaves sort of go into the soil or the mucky substrate and almost act like roots. Um, so let's take a look at these cool plants. Okay, so here is our friend the bladderwort. Um, as you can see, it would be really inconspicuous without its flower. It's got these really skinny looking stems um, and the rest of the plant is under the water. Uh, so, but if we look at the flower, um, you can see that it's sort of two-lipped. It's got this wider lower lip on the bottom here and then um, a smaller upper lip and then it also has a spur underneath the lower lip there. And uh, all bladderworts look pretty similar, at least all the ones that we have here in northern Michigan. Um, they're all yellow and they're all generally the same shape and habit. Um, but you can tell the difference in, you know, small differences in the shape and size of the petals and the spur there. Uh, so, you can see how, you know, it's only conspicuous when it's flowering, but the cool part about bladderwort is actually under the surface. And remember, these plants are actually just free-floating, so it's okay to sort of dig it out. And see what's going on down there. All right, so let's take a closer look. Uh, we can see that we've got these little structures right here, no more than a quarter inch um, wide. These are the bladders. And if we look closely, we can see that those bladders actually have little hairs on the openings of them and those are so that when um, the bladderwort's prey, because remember it is carnivorous, when the bladderwort's prey comes by uh, and um, tickles or triggers those little hairs, the bladder opens and it acts like a vacuum and it sucks um, in water and hopefully for the bladderwort, uh, the prey too. And this prey might be little zooplankton, tiny little crustaceans like water fleas, um, or little copepods, or even paramecium. All right, so I've put that uh, bladderwort back and I'm excited because I think we correctly identified that as flat leaf bladderwort because if you notice, the bladders uh, were actually on a separate sort of stem-like structure than the leaf, which is another um, sort of diagnostic characteristic that it's flat leaf bladderwort and not one of the other ones. So that's good. Um, so when the bladderwort captures that prey, it actually houses uh, certain types of bacteria and different, um, it has different enzymes inside those bladders that help to break down that prey. And that is what supplies the bladderwort with nitrogen. So it is not getting nitrogen from, um, well, first of all, it's not getting any of its nutrients from the soil because remember, it's not rooted. It is um, sort of free floating in the water. So it's getting some nutrients from the water, but it's not getting nitrogen from the water or not enough. Um, so hence, uh, it's evolved to get nitrogen by being carnivorous. And you might be wondering why uh, does the bladderwort need to resort to eating insects uh, or paramecium or little crustaceans in order to get its nitrogen, why can't it just get it from um, its substrate like um, most plants? And the reason has to do with, um, it's the same reason why some of our other plants in this northern fen or bog type habitats uh, 
have evolved carnivory, like pitcher plants and round leaves sundew. Um, it's because there is a lack of nitrogen here, and that has everything to do with the fact that this area is flooded pretty much the entire year. Um, and so plant decay is really slowed down by being underwater in sort of a low oxygen environment. Um, so if you are a composter, you know that you get nitrogen in your compost from your green materials that you add to your compost and the browns are what gives you carbon. So green materials breaking down like green plants are what uh, put nitrogen into the soil and also into, um, you know, sort of like the surface water in the fen. Uh, so, if you're not getting a high rate of plant decomposition, then there's not a lot of nitrogen in the substrate. You gotta evolve a different way of getting nitrogen or you need to adapt um, to be able to survive in really low nitrogen conditions. But the bladderwort, like our other carnivorous plants, has evolved to eat animals um, in order to satisfy its nitrogen needs. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hopefully you learned something about the wild west of plant life in the Northern Fen. Uh, I will see you in a couple weeks. Bye.